Welcome back to Cambry and Bobby After Dark. Oh, yeah, I mean. <laughs> She's like, oh, I'm comfy now. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Cambria and Bobby After, After Dark. Dark. <laughs> so we got some questions that you guys have sent in or have commented on other videos. So we are going to go through those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got a decent amount of questions. So yeah, uh, this first one is what is your advice for a young person hoping to buy a house someday? start saving now yes um you don't want to rack up a bunch of credit card debt mm -hmm. um if you do you're going to want to start paying it down as much as you can now because when you do buy a house obviously they check your credit score and if you have a, a high debt to income ratio it's you're going to get either... Uh, it can affect your rates and how yeah, much you can buy. Exactly. So, one of the ways, if you do already have, like, a, a high debt, um, if you have a bigger down payment, that would be good. Mm -hmm. um, also, if you don't want to have PMI, um, that having the down payment is super important. Um if you are in the military or you're thinking about joining the military, then you can um, take actually, advantage of a VA benefits. Exactly. And then that way you're, you won't have a PMI. So that's... That's huge. That's huge. Now the downside to a VA loan is usually um, the percentage is slightly higher than what you could get if you did have a like a PMI or whatever, or a normal loan, but zero money down on a house versus having the down payment. I mean, you weigh it out, have maybe a little bit of higher percentage uh, or interest um, for your loan versus not having to put any money down. That way you do have money to do, you know. Fixes or just buffer of. Or buy stuff that you don't, you don't, normally have because maybe you did live in an apartment or you're coming from yeah. from your parents house or whatever there's a lot of stuff that you need for a house that you don't really think of well and also it's good just to have money put aside because it's very common especially even if you buy a brand new house which i don't recommend buying a brand new house if you're a first-time home buyer if you can that's great yeah. But don't be afraid of a fixer upper first time home like building blocks. Um Yeah, because if you do even if you're not really good at fixing stuff, I mean, even if you're just a beginner or whatever, there's stuff you can do to a house and add that sweat equity into the house and then it becomes more it's an investment versus if you buy a new house and you do absolutely nothing to it, mm -hmm. now you're just you're just going off of the market if the market's good it could be worth more if it's not now it's not a new house anymore is there a chance that it will go down in value hard to say it depends on where it is honestly yeah but if you can get something cheap because it needs work and then you do that set work now you could just have gained like um like my grandma she her house is paid off. I mean, she's retired. But her house is paid off. She bought it in the 90s, 97, I think. And she got it for X amount. Now the house is worth over double than what she initially paid for it. It's like four times. Well, it's not four times. It's probably it's closer to three times what it's worth, what, what she bought it for. Now, granted, she's had it for almost 30 years. Yeah. But either way, she's done stuff to it. And if, you know, it's worth three times as much, it's like, yeah, granted, you're going to have the years of, you know, prices going up and whatnot. But also what she's all done to it, now its value is three times what it was. So it's like, 
if you plan on staying in a house, that's a great way to make make the money. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're just doing like flips or like short stays, that that's that's where it gets a little bit more tricky. And if you don't plan on staying in a house long, then I then maybe just do an apartment, honestly. But it's also hard because I feel like the market nowadays is extremely difficult. Like from even when you bought your very first house. Yeah. To it was a starter house, two bedrooms. Yeah. And then we bought our second house, and that we thought was a hard time to buy a house. Yeah. When we bought our second, we were like looking, losing out on houses, putting it was offers. easy to sell, but it was hard to buy. And then this time around, it it was even a well, harder market. So also like with my first house that I bought, it's what was the profit on it? I think it was like 30? 20 or 30. Yeah. So we did some work to it. All right. So we, we made 20, 30 grand off it. Lived there for, I don't even remember Eight? how many years. But then our next house was brand new. Now, the, I think one of the only reasons we got that house, uh, the Watertown house, was because... They had a price wrong. It was priced wrong, but also it wasn't finished yet. Yes. It was one of their demo houses or was supposed to be a demo house. So it had like a lot of like upgrades already done to it and they were gonna make it a demo house. But hey, house is for sale, you know. They still, even though it was a demo, it still was listed for sale. So it wasn't even done yet. And we're like, yes, we want this house because it was really hard market to buy in. And I think that was the only reason we got it is because they're like, well, it's not gonna be finished till this time. And we're like, we have okay. time. Yeah. We have time. So it all depends on the market too. I mean, there's there's a lot of things that drive pricing and should you buy and should you not. So Yeah. But we made more money off of that house. So it's like I guess don't buy your dream house. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. That's that's what we're getting at. Don't buy your dream house as your first house. Because honestly, even if you think you are buying your dream house, you're probably not because you learn what you want and you need in a house by living in them. Yes, exactly. So there you go. Don't that that's probably the best advice for you. Don't buy your dream house. Don't make it your first. Buy something that you Learn. can afford. Something maybe you can put some money into or work into and make money off it. Then you go to your next house. Because also there's a lot, there's, I mean, there's a ton of factors that play into it. You might not be married or maybe you are married or maybe you're, you're, you got a girlfriend, whatever. But that can drive a lot of things too, mm -hmm. because that will determine where you wanna live. So if you have a house and let's say you meet somebody, they live an hour away, you know, and then you have to, you get married and then you're like, well, whose place do we move into? Right. If you each have a house, that makes it difficult. If one person has an apartment and you have a house, then it's like, hey, it's easy for you to get out of your apartment. Then yes. We sell them house or whatever. But that's the other thing is when you buy a house, you're more locked into that location and it's not as easy to always move as when we tried to initially sell our first house, we couldn't sell it. Yeah. It was, that's when the housing market was crashed. crashed. We couldn't sell at all. Mm-hmm. There, like nobody was buying. So, I mean, there's there's that where it's like, hey, I mean, we would have moved to Florida back in 2010. Yeah. If we, we tried. If the housing market <laughs> wasn't crashed, we would have been gone. Yeah. But you learn as you go. And yeah, don't buy your dream house first because it's not really your dream house. All right. Yeah. Next one. Um, how is the transition from active duty to civilian life in your experience? and my experience. I mean, it, for everybody it's different. For me, it was fairly easy because I always had a way of when I went home, there was just like a way to like shut it off. Some people don't shut it off. Those guys are the live and breathe and die military guys. 
that can spout off every acronym <laughs> and knows every single spec and detail on whatever equipment, that makes it hard for them to transition. But I knew what I, what my job was. And when I went home, it was, that was it. Now that did make it where I didn't go home until all that work was done that needed to be done. Yeah. But then that way, I didn't take the work home. Oh. I didn't have to bring military home. So I always did made it so it was home is separate. And so that made transitioning out of active duty really easy. And it was just it, it more of just getting used to being around family versus military. That That's the only transition that was the harder part. Yeah, I don't think transitioning, like, um, from, like, when you're stateside working really was any different. Um, the only time there was really a transition is when you were deployed. Yeah. Like, that transition of when you got deployed and then when you came home, that was a transition. But I don't think retirement, other than that you're home more. <laughs> yeah, no, but that's kind of nice. <laughs> yeah, I'm just homework, so that made it really easy. Yeah. Um. So I don't know if that was very helpful. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it for everybody, it's you, different. It helps when you keep work, life, home life, balance, and separate. Also, another factor that can play into it is uh, mental health. So. I, before I got out of the military, I was already getting counseling and stuff like that for mental health. Had I not, that could have been a problem after I got out. Um, actually, I know it would have been a problem. Honestly, we had a couple really rough months. Well, yeah, we did, but you were I know, I know that would have, that played a huge factor in being done with the military. Yeah. So there's that too. If you just, you know, you do your time and you get out and you don't address any of those issues, it'll come back to haunt you later. Yes. Whereas if they're addressed prior to getting out, I think that makes it a lot easier. Um, definitely made it easier for me. I know people that didn't address it and they had a lot harder time after they got out and they still are having a hard time. So that plays a huge factor in as well. Well, and we know a lot of people don't like to address it when they're in because they don't want to get they don't want to get kicked out. It, it's not that you don't want to get kicked out. It's more uh, they don't call it blacklisted, but you, you don't know, want that. or or flagged, red, whatever you want to call it, however you want to label it. Even though it's not supposed to exist. It still does. <laughs> it still does. If people know you're going to counseling and they and it's like, hey, that's this is all confidential and private. It don't matter. It's it, not. It's still not. Yeah. People find out because people can't keep their mouths shut. That's the problem. Um. So. But if you're getting out, who cares? Yeah. Exactly. So, so that's start why before you get out. That's why. Um. I. I didn't go and seek help because I knew, hey, I have this much time left. I'm not going for help because they're going to kick me out or whatever. Or th they won't look at me the same way. I'll never get promoted. And that's true because once I did, once I did, you know, go and seek help, that there was multiple times that I was supposed to get promoted that suddenly it just went the other way. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what the heck? I was, uh, I was locked in. I was told I was locked in and all this. And then the receiving unit backed out, backed out. It's yeah. like, wait, how do you back out and be like, Oh, we're just going to take this guy. And that guy is not even in the equation. What do you mean? We're just going to move him into this spot because whatever X, Y, Z like, no, 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 this, this was a done deal. So, it does play a factor. I know it does. Um, 
it not just not just me there's other people i know that have had that same problem yeah but i still really i it, all that aside getting the help prior to getting out best thing you can do it really is so well and i feel like that's for anyone if it's military if you're any type of first responder i know my dad definitely well, deals also, with a lot of stuff and he didn't get a lot of help well also if you don't if you don't address it as it's happening or while you're still in then you have to prove it after the fact yeah and when it comes to the va trying to prove stuff that happened during the military during your time in the military it's very difficult and i i had to fight some of the stuff because certain people didn't do their jobs and write up the medical reports like they were supposed to because they wanted an easier time and it was a hard it was a back and forth where it's like no no no, no. this is required this is needed even though you didn't think it at the time now you're gonna have to still do the work but now it's just gonna be that much harder um and yeah and then it makes stuff take way longer yeah so yeah get it get it before you get out address it while you can so next question all right uh this one is asking how bjorn's health has been since moving to florida a million times better his eczema is almost non-existent he still has flare-ups but a lot less um his breathing's better his breathing's a ton better and those were the big health issues was his asthma and eczema and it's completely different than when we were in Wisconsin. Yeah. Like he still has like his moments, but it's so much less than it was. Like when winter hit in Wisconsin, his skin was trash. His breathing almost every year we ended up in the ER because of his breathing going down. Yeah. And we haven't and done that once since being down here. No, I think he's only needed he's a needed neb, neb treatment. treatment. And one of it was because we came back from Wisconsin. Yep, one of it was when we came back from Wisconsin. And then the other one was when we were doing demo. Yes. We shouldn't have had him help as much as we did. Yeah. That was uh, us bad, not thinking about the drywall dust and stuff yeah um but since that we've been fine yeah his health is definitely far far better yeah than when we were in wisconsin all right so the next one is talking about how the diet's been doing and then if we are going to be doing any weigh-ins anytime soon we haven't been doing great no recently <laughs> at no. the diet no. Um, just a lot of stuff going on. No. So. Yeah, and I, I weighed myself a couple days ago, and I'm not as low as I was while doing carnivore or ketovore, but I'm no, I'm definitely far less than what I was, um, than when I was in the military. <laughs> yeah. So, Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not bad. I'm at 189, which isn't great, but it really isn't that bad. I'm under 200, and that's where <laughs> I want to be. Actually, this is, this is probably the way I really would want to be at is right around that 190, 185. So, I'm I'm not far off from where, where I would want to be. So Yeah. Um, and I just try not to weigh myself too much. I know it's something that... I can get really obsessive over, so I'd rather just well, not. That, that I know I'm going to Wisconsin, and my diet's going to be completely out the window. So very true. Figured why not start ahead of time and just <laughs> not really be that strict. Yeah, because you're probably going to get noodles and company. Noodles and company. <laughs> cousins and, I'm sorry, and cousins. The two places we don't have here. And I know what you're going to say. Bobby, there's a Noodles and Company in Florida. It's not the same. It doesn't taste the same. And it's not anywhere near us. And it's over an hour away. So, yeah. no, not the same thing. 
So it's a Wisconsin thing. That and cousin subs. Yeah. I'm jealous about that. Um, what series are we currently binging? We just finished Reacher. Yes. Um, that was really good. Yeah. We finished. Yeah. There's two seasons out of Reacher. We binged those. Yeah. And we heard there's the third one's coming, just not right now. Uh, we Halo. binged Halo. Yeah. Now, I've seen the first season of Halo, and then the second one started, and I was watching it as they were coming out. And then she kind of saw one of the episodes, and I'm like, why don't you just watch from the beginning and just binge it all the way? And yeah, now it's we're we just we're caught up. We're all 100% caught up. So there's only season two, episode six out right now. So we binged all that. Uh, what's the firefighter one we've been watching? Tacoma also, FD. Tacoma FD. That's been funny. Oh, and Resident Alien. Resident Alien. Yes. Yeah, we we were binging that as well. So we we will binge one show and then we might feel Jump like something little. else. So then we'll watch yeah. something else and then. There's, uh, I kind of, I haven't been watching it recently, but I was watching The Boys, um, and that was just me, not her. So. He stays up a lot later than I do, so he often will watch shows Yeah. that I don't watch. Yeah, well, I don't know if you'd even like The Boys. It's about, like, bad superheroes. Oh. So I don't know if you'd even want to watch superheroes. I don't know. I mean, it's not it's not Halo, and it's not not Jack Reacher. Well, and Halo is definitely different. I feel like I don't know if I would have been into Halo as much. But you played the but game. But I played the game a ton so you when know I was younger. What the? And it's based off of the game. Yes. So that's it's just like hey, if you played the if you played Halo ever in your life, which in the one episode they actually showed an original Xbox <laughs> yeah. on the wall as an antique. If you caught that, I don't know, but. Yeah, it's like I remember playing original Halo on first Xbox. And then I played a lot of Halo on 360 as well. I haven't played it on Xbox One. I do have Halo on Xbox One. <laughs> Just haven't played it. Yeah. But yeah, Halo's awesome. It is a good show. I'm trying to think what else. I think right now that's been it. I, I did get almost done um I'm waiting for the reunion right now of love is blind but i watch that more than he does obviously yeah um but those I are i don't know if there's any other show that we we're binging together i don't think so because we had grays but then we watched them all yeah and that was kind of it um here's a question how did Bobby learn to do all the things around the house? Remodel, electrical, plumbing. Um, also, she loved the cooking you did. Oh. Uh, YouTube. <laughs> if you don't know how to do something, type it in. And it'll probably be a video. If it's very specific, like, hey, I'm working with this piece of equipment, type in the same search, but with that model number as your search. More than likely, somebody has done it before you, and it'll just tell you how to do it. Now, there's some stuff that you just learn along the way, and it's just it can be trial and error. But I think the biggest thing for anybody is just somebody's done it before you. Don't don't reinvent the wheel. Yeah. Unless it's custom work, like stuff I'm doing on the Camaro. It, there's not. I've looked. At, I'm like, how do I do this? Crap. There is nothing. <laughs> this is crap. So there's some stuff that's not on YouTube, but it has to be like on old equipment or whatever. Yeah. And it's, it's a lot harder to find but pretty much anything now. Modern. And a lot of it's trial and error. Like in videos, everything is made to look so much simpler yes. than it is. There's a lot more swearing and time <laughs> that goes off. into every project that gets cut. Yeah, maybe more drinks. You never know. <laughs> but yeah, unless you're remodeling like some house that was made in the 1800s, there, there's probably a YouTube video. Yeah. It's it's the older something is, the less there's a chance the video is going to be on it. But the newer something is, 
you'll probably find a video on it on any i mean anything i mean how to how to do my pool pump there's a video how to the hardest part was figuring out what gaskets that i had because i needed to figure out when the pump was made was it pre-96 or after 96 that was the hardest part that I had to actually look in a manual for to determine what I what needed. Had. And I still ordered the wrong dang thing, <laughs> but it was fine because they're like, oh, well, if you got this gasket set, all you do is this and that's it. it there's, it's the same thing as the, the after one. And I'm like, well, why didn't you say that? I would just order. I wouldn't <laughs> have spent all this time looking the crap up. But yes, YouTube, YouTube. and Google everything. Um, this one is asking, why don't we barbecue more often, especially since we live in Florida? Um, it's, well, you do majority of the cooking. Yeah. It's easier for you to just do it in the kitchen. That, yeah, that's honestly all it is, is simplicity of just doing it quickly in the kitchen. And I, more often than not, I want to make something that's a quick 30 minutes everyone's eating um but quality of food i prefer the grill because nothing beats that oh especially since the we have the flavors power grill and yeah the the smoke grills definitely preferred but it is more work it's dirtier work too because then you use it you got to clean it you yeah. gotta it's just more more work and I'm also not as good with it on the grill as I am in my cast iron. Like, I yeah. can cook a really good steak in my cast iron. I know the temp. I know everything. Where my on the grill, sometimes I do really good. Sometimes not it so good. It can be a hit or miss. Yeah. But overall, yeah, we used to use, we used to cook on the grill a lot more. Mm-hmm. But then we had kids, and the more kids you had, then it's like, let's just make this quick. Yeah. Well, yeah. Life gets busy, and you're just looking for a quick 30-minute meal and something everyone will eat. <laughs> but if it's just us eating, then heck yeah. Let's just make it on the grill. Yeah. Um, or maybe you might use the grill more now since a certain thing just got a makeover. This is true. <laughs> Which you guys would have already seen. Well, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. By the time this airs, you will have seen it if you've watched her My most channel. recent video. Yeah, you'll see the pool area makeover, which turned out so good. That was a lot of work, though. Once yeah. again, I thought it'd be like oh, yeah, three, three days. days. It took a lot more than three days. And I thought it was just going to be, you know, her doing it. No, I had help. It was a lot more work for me. I did not get everything done I wanted to get done. You didn't do too, too much. I moved a lot of stuff. You moved a lot of stuff, yes. I hung stuff. Yeah. Drilled holes. What else did I do? You a lot of moving. You mainly just helped me rearrange and move. Because I wasn't going to be able to move it myself. Mm. <laughs> um, I right. did a little bit of painting. Stuff you couldn't reach. Yes. I had to go on the bigger ladder. She couldn't even reach it with the big ladder. So there. I painted <laughs> a little bit. I don't if like you, painting. If you saw the video, you would have known how much I painted compared to him. Well, I'm just saying 1% is 1%, but <laughs> I did paint. Um, all right, this one. Can you tell me about how military life is? We don't have that here in Sweden. There's no military in Sweden? No. I didn't know that. Really? Well, I just assumed everyone had some sort of military. No, they're neutral. Even neutral, no military at all? No. That's kind of awesome, though. Like, you can just... I want to go to Sweden. We're a small country. Still, that seems so, like much more relaxing and peaceful they got a bunch of banks banks yeah that's where everybody goes to hide their money oh so that's why nobody attacks them 
because they got <laughs> they hold all the money. All their hidden money is in Sweden. You don't need a military then. Everybody just leaves you alone. Oh, that's funny. Um, what's military life like? Um. Okay, so there's two types of military life. There's stateside, and then there's deployment side. Deployment side is like being in prison with some freedoms. But for the most part, it's in prison because you're stuck in another country. You're told when to, when to be places, you're told when to get up and all, you know, what to wear, everything. You're just told how to do everything. A lot like prison. Um, you're not allowed to go anywhere unless you get permission. So there you go. Um, and you're there for an extended period of time. It's just like prison. So it's rough. It can cause a lot of heartaches. It can mentally be draining and exhausting. So that's deployment side. So that's why it's like, hey, this is great. We get to all this training we've done, all the years of training, and we're gonna actually use it. We're gonna go do it. And you're excited about that, but then you're in prison. <laughs> so then you're just like, I wanna go home. I don't wanna be here anymore. How, how many more days? And you're counting the days down. And it never fails that when they are gone, everything breaks. breaks. Everything goes wrong when they leave yes we had so many issues when he was gone that there's plenty of times i just cried because <laughs> yeah. it was just like what else is going to break while you're gone there was one time you were uh on on training and our sub pump broke and our basement flooded yep when you were deployed overseas the garage door the broke, garage door broke on the same night, Bjorn had his very first asthma attack, and I was freaking out because my baby was not breathing. And yeah, couldn't get the car out of the garage. Couldn't get the car out of the garage, and I needed to take him to the ER. Um, Bjorn <laughs> broke our TV. Yeah. Because him and Xander were fighting. Now, mind you, he was like... Two or three? Three? Sure. Yeah, three. Three. And he tried to throw his cup at Xander's head, which ended up hitting our big screen TV in our family room and busting it. <laughs> there's just there's just a lot of stuff. So then there's the other side where you're stateside, or or even um, you could be overseas and like you know like in Japan, Germany, you know like at at a, a normal U.S. base. But your family's with you. But your family's with you. So there's the there's the side where your family's with you, and there's the side where they're not. Where they're not is like prison, and where they are is like a normal job. You go to work, you do your job, you go home. Now, it can be extremely stressful depending on what your job is. But that's like any job. Any job can be stressful. You could hate your boss, or you could love your boss. More than likely, you hate them. But, <laughs> or you just dislike them, or whatever. It, you maybe there's nothing to do with your boss. It could just be the company that you work for that you just dislike. Now, I'm not saying I dislike the military. There's aspects that I dislike. There may be certain people that I dislike, but you still have to learn to work together and do the job because lives could be on the line. So, yeah, it's just like any other job. I mean whatever you do you know it's, it's the same thing it's just at some point you have to expect to go to the deployed side which is like go to prison so that's the only difference when i'm at when i'm at home working you know it's like okay everything's good you have family you have a support system all that and then when you take that away it sucks so well and it goes back to you were always really good about work-life balance work was left at work when yeah. you got home, you were home. Yeah. I mean, the only time that I ever had work interfere with home is I told my soldiers, if you need anything, call me between this time and this time. These are available hours. 
I, I left it pretty open. I mean, it was, don't call me after 10 p.m. or 2200 unless it is shit hit the fan. Otherwise, don't. I, Yeah. And then in the morning, hey, you can call me, you know, 6 a.m. or whatever, and that's fine. I'm up. So, yeah. So that's a pretty big window, honestly. I mean, eight hours out of there, that's, that's for me. But. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. I think that was it. I think that was the last question. Oh, well. Yes, that was the last one. Oh. Okay. Well, then I guess that's where we're going to end this video. So, mm -hmm. make sure you hit that subscribe button. Do the like. You know, the thumbs up. Yeah, that looked weird. But <laughs> thumbs up. <laughs> that was weird. And if you have any questions, if you want to ask a question, do a comment. Mm -hmm. You know, do that. Um, you can either send us questions through the comments on YouTube or through Instagram. Either way, it's fine. Um, so, and then we'll do your we'll do your comment probably on the next uh, Q and A. Um, but yeah, so subscribe, like, comment, all the things, <laughs> all the things. I think that's it. All right. See you next time. Bye. Bye.